Father, we thank you that in Revelation chapter 7, we read about every tribe of Israel. We read about the great multitude, Lord God, which no one could number of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues standing before the throne and before the Lamb, crying with a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God, who sits upon the throne and to the Lamb. I don't know how, but you will make sure that this word becomes a reality in heaven. Thank you, Lord, that what we are about to do tonight will sow into your eternal truth. We have a choice to make tonight. We could either believe in this passage and pray people into the kingdom, or we could just read this as another story. Lord, tonight, would you allow the faith that is the size of a mustard seed in us to grow to at least the size of a kernel of corn or bigger, God, maybe even an avocado seed, that our faith will grow tonight, Father. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, it's, a, it's an honor that uh, we can share in uh, cooperating in this service. It's great to be at the Hub DFW. I heard so much about you guys. I'm glad that we're finally here. And uh, last night, we passed this out, the uh, Billion Soul Harvest uh, information. And on the back, there's invitation to Colorado Springs. Raise your hand if you want another copy or if you didn't get one last night. We have a couple of gentlemen who will pass this out. There's extra ones if you want to give one to our friends. Just raise your hand. So I want to begin with the story. In 1945, around September, there was a young boy in the city of Seoul. Seoul, he heard that Korea has been liberated from the empire of Japan. He saw the Japanese leave. But you know what? It's not enough that the enemy leaves. The good people has, has to occupy. So that surrender of Japan, by the way, I love Japanese people. I'm married to one. I don't hold any grudges. So that surrender happened August 15, 1945. A, a few weeks later, he saw a sight, this young boy saw a sight that he'd never seen before. He saw Americans. They were all wearing a same uniform. They all had big eyes and big nose. He told me that they all looked alike, except they're a different height, okay? If you've never seen white Americans before, you would think, I would think, you all look alike, right? Well, that's not all. Well, what happened was they were marching in downtown Seoul, which wasn't much of a downtown back in those days. And he realized, wow, I am no longer oppressed by people. I've been free. But he didn't realize where the freedom came from. So a few days or a few weeks later, this young boy, nine years old, was playing with his friends outside, like any other Korean boy. And they heard a sound that they never heard before. And they were curious, so they all ran to the sound. It was a church bell. So these boys went inside, and they heard the gospel for the first time. They were free to hear about Jesus. And the seed was planted. This boy will someday grow up to a believer. I'm talking about my father. You see, America has blessed the nations. The Church of, Church of America sent missionaries to places, and many were martyred. These American soldiers, many of them stayed or came back a few years later, and they died during the Korean War. 
But you know what? Now, Korean believers are in a position to bless back, return the blessing. So many of the Korean believers that are here, they came last year. Last year, we had our first uh, Billion Soul Harvest Global Summit. It was invitation only. We were only able to seat 150. But in preparation for that, they were broken up into three teams. They drove and prayed in 30 states, traveling more than 10,000 miles. You see, God is bringing his ecclesia together. See, we are one with the church of Ukraine. We are one with the underground church of China and North Korea. We are one with the suffering believers of Iran. You know what? It's not enough for us to have communion tonight. It's not enough for us to read that in heaven there will be every tribe, tongue, and nation. We're going to bless each other. So I want everyone to stand. So raise your hand if, if your own... No, 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 not, not yet. <laughs> Koreans are so obedient. So raise your hand if... English is your only fluent language. Now, you might speak like tacos, taquitos. Okay, now, rest of you, you speak another language. Find someone who speaks English only. This is what you're going to do. You're going to pray one minute for each other. You're not going to ask, what can I pray for? You're going to let the Holy Spirit show you how to bless that person. Pray in your dominant language. Don't ask any questions. Let's give Holy Spirit an opportunity to show how you can pray for that person. So find someone. Again, raise your hand if you only speak in. That's your, that's your fluent language. So those of you who speak a different language, find someone who's raising their hands. One minute each. Go. Prayer blessing. You can share your names if you want, but don't ask, how could I pray for you? Pray, whatever the Spirit shows you. Thank you, Jesus. We love because you first loved us. Thank you, Lord, that we are members of your eternal family. Thank you, Lord, that we're heaven-bound. Thank you, Lord, that tonight we will make history together. Lord, together we will shape nations in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing of bringing us together, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Okay, let's give Jesus a clap offering. Thank you, Jesus.